Hello, welcome to this probability lesson where we're going to be calculating the probability of multiple events. So let's jump right in. So, for example, I have two bags containing different colour cubes. I pick out a cube at random from the first bag and then the second. What is the chance I pick out a blue cube and then a green cube? So in other words, we're trying to find P of blue and green, okay? So before we use any numbers, let's try and visualise what are the possible outcomes of picking a bag, of picking a, a cube from each of these bags. Well, we can either get a blue and a yellow, or we get a blue and a green, or we get a red, a yellow, or we get a red and a green. So we know that there are four different outcomes, okay? So there's four different outcomes. Now, how many of those outcomes are blue and green? Well, there's only one. There's only one. There's only one out of four outcomes where we get blue and green. And we can show one out of four by putting as a fraction, one over four. Okay. But eventually, we're going to get to a point where there's going to be so many cubes or so many bags, we're not going to be able just to simply write out all of our, all of the different options to then just literally count how many of them, uh, how many of these are going to be successful events. So we need a mathematical way of doing this. And thankfully, this is very easy to do. If we look at these bags now, so we're going to calculate the probability of blue and green. Okay, blue and green. And the way we do this is when we find out probabilities of something and something, we use multiply. And what we're going to do, we're going to multiply, multiply probability of blue times by the, by the probability of getting green in the second bag. Now, what's the chance of getting a blue in the first bag? Well, one out of two, two of the cubes in the bag are blue. Therefore, the probability of getting a blue bag is one over two. We'll multiply that by what is the probability of getting a green cube in this bag? Well, there's only one green one out of two. So it's going to be a half again. It's one out of two. What is a half times a half? Well, you multiply the top numbers. One times one is one. Two times two is four. Hey, would you look at that? It's exactly the same as when we drew out all the of all the um, all the possible outcomes and selected the ones which we wanted. Okay, so not only can we show this visually by physically drawing out and counting out all the outcomes, but also using maths, all we have to do is multiply the probability of the first event happening and multiply it by the second event happening. Let's have a look at another example. Now we've got two, two bags again. This time there's three cubes in the first bag and there's two cubes in the second. Again, I'm going to pick one cube from each bag. What is the chance I pick out a red and a yellow cube? In other words, what's the probability of red then yellow? So we've got all these options here. So we can either get blue then yellow, blue then green, white then yellow, white then green, red then yellow, or red then green. How many of these are red and yellow? Well, there's only one. So there's only one out of how many how many options are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different outcomes, okay? So if there's a one out of six chance in getting a red, then a yellow, then the probability is one over six. So that's going to be P of red, then yellow. But what about using maths again? Does this work using maths? Well, let's find out. So I've, I told you that the probability of red then yellow will be the probability of red in the first bag multiplied by the probability of yellow in the second bag. Well, how many red cubes are in the first bag? There is one out of three. There's one red cube out of three cubes in total. How many yellow cubes are in the second bag? Well, there's one out of two, or a half. There's a half chance of getting a yellow cube out. Therefore, multiply them together. One times one is one. Three times two is six. And hey, look at that. Again, it's the same as if we manually count out all of the cubes. Okay. So now we've now we've been using the we've been using the visualizations to sort of prove to us that these are the that this is what the probability is of these combined events but now let's let's leave the the diagrams and let's let's trust the numbers okay let's have a go at this i roll a six-sided dice twice 
what is the chance I get a six and then a six? In other words, what's the probability of getting of rolling two sixes in a row? So P of six and six. Two sixes in a row when I roll a dice. So according to the last two slides, I told you that the probability of working out two sixes in a row is to first find the probability of rolling a six and then multiply that by the probability of rolling a six. OK, and because it's the same dice and it's always it's an equal chance of getting each number, these probabilities won't change. So what is the chance of rolling a six on a dice? Well, there's only one six on a dice. And there are six numbers in total. So the chance of getting a six is one over six. And again, what's the chance of getting a six on a dice? Well, it's, it's going to be exactly the same as the first outcome. There's only one six on a six sided dice. Multiply these fractions together. One times one is one. Six times six is 36. So therefore, we're saying that this is the one in, there's a one in 36 chance of getting a two sixes in a row of getting two sixes in a row okay and if you were to draw out all the possible outcomes of rolling two dice in a row you would find that there are 36 different outcomes and there is only one of them where you get two sixes rolled in a row okay so there's a one in 36 chance of getting two sixes in a row let's have a look at one more example i roll a four-sided dice twice and toss a coin. Sorry, I shouldn't say twice. I roll a four-sided dice and toss a coin. What is the chance I get a two and tails? Okay, so we're trying to find the probability of rolling a two on a four-sided dice, really important, and then getting tails on a coin that I flip. Well, I've told you that to figure this out, we need to find the probability of rolling a two on a four-sided dice and then multiply that by the probability of getting a tails on a coin. So what's the probability of getting these? Well, the probability of getting a two on a four-sided dice, well, there's only, there's only one number two on a dice. Because it's a four-sided dice, there's gonna be four different outcomes. The chance of getting a two is one over four. Now, what's the chance of getting a tails on a coin flip? Well, there's only one tails, on a coin and a coin only has two sides so it's a quarter chance of getting the two on the dice and there's a half chance of getting tails so one times one is one and four times two is eight so there is an eighth chance of rolling a two on the dice and then getting a tails t for tails okay job done and i think there's one more example sorry I toss a coin four times, sorry. I toss a fair coin four times. What is the chance I get tails four, four times? In other words, I, th I throw a coin four times and I get tails, 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 tails. So we're trying to find the probability of tails, 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 tails. And as we've said all the way up till now, the probability of this, the probability of getting a tails, times the probability of getting tails, times the probability of getting tails, times the probability of getting tails. What's the chance of getting tails on a coin? Well, there's only one tails on a coin of two sides. So it's a half. It's going to be the same for the next coin, same for the next coin, and same for the next coin. Multiply these all together. One times one times one times one is one. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. So there's only a 1 in 16 chance that you will get four tails in a row when you toss a coin. OK, let's have a look at the main task now. So I want you to find the probability of the combined events. OK, so so read the questions carefully and then you need to find the probability of these things happening. OK, so pause the video and have a go at these questions. And here are the answers. Very well done if you got those right. Now let's have a look at the checking question now. A cube is taken out of the bag and is not replaced. A second cube is then taken out of the bag. 
find the probability that both cubes taken out of the bag are yellow, okay? So remember, this is the keyword here. This means the cube is not put back in the bag, okay? Once it's taken out, it's taken out of the bag for good, okay? So find the probability of getting a yet two yellow cubes in a row. Okay, pause the video and have a go. Okay, so as we've said this whole lesson, the probability of two events, one happening after the other, is basically the probability of each of them happening multiplied by the other. So all we're going to do is the probability of getting a yellow cube, and we're going to multiply that by the probability of getting another yellow cube. What's the probability of getting a yellow cube in this bag? Well, there's two yellow cubes out of five. So there's a two, two in five chance or two fifths chance of picking a yellow cube out of this bag. Now we're going to multiply it by the probability of getting a second yellow cube. But remember, we, we did not replace the yellow cube we took out. So we need to rub out this yellow cube here. Okay, so there's no longer another yellow cube in there. Now, what's the probability of picking out a yellow cube this time round? Well, there's only one yellow cube in there, and there's only four cubes left. So there's a one in four chance of picking a yellow cube this time. Once, so that was the hardest part to figure out, okay? The fact that there's only a one in four chance of getting the second yellow cube, okay? If you've taken out, the first one you've taken out was yellow. Finally, multiply the numbers. Two times one is two. 5 times 4 is 20. Simplify the fraction. You can divide them both by 2. So we've got 1 over 10. And that there is a 1 in 10 chance of picking out two yellow cubes in a row. Okay, so very well done if you got that right. And we'll see you next lesson. Bye now.